my first response is like, Bryson, shut your mouth. He went out on the golf course on his YouTube channel and compared a Nike one tour. That's, you know, that's what he said. That's what we, we believe it to be one tour golf ball to his pro V one X left dash under the guise of this would be what it is like to play with a rolled back golf ball, because this is how a rolled back golf ball performs. He, he's an idiot is actually a direct quote of a text message I received. What is up, everybody? How you living? No puts given. Tony and Chris, golf spy T, golf spy C. I went with the Easter outfit, Tony. We just celebrated Easter for those people out there. Maybe just uh, after some Easter eggs. I, you got some sun, huh? Everybody says that. It's it's, a, it's just been dry, your, too. It's just my natural face. aura. It's my stupid red face. Um, you were able to play not, the golf, right? I am able to play the golf. I should get out. This is supposed to be 70, okay. Tony, on Friday. Shut up. 70 degrees on so, this Friday. I, I'm just hoping. So, you know, everybody, as everybody probably does not know, we get the staff gets one Friday off a month. And so I was hoping to play golf. We got the snow. And so on my Friday, I only work nine and a half hours. So pretty solid. Good day. Good day. Maybe, Good maybe this Friday. We'll see. We're supposed to get more weather on Thursday. I don't know. Anyway. Hey. Let's talk about something better. You're the one that lives in New York. Yeah, here we go. We got tour recap stuff. We got to talk about that. We have a course management myth that we're going to bust. Bust it hard. Wide open. We're going to help you shoot lower scores, people, in the middle. Stay tuned for that. There's some interesting equipment stuff coming out. Some new shafts on the market. Something hit the USGA conforming list on Monday. We'll talk about that. And then if we have time, we'll get into a couple of our favorite April's April Fools gags. If we gonna, have time. <laughs> if, if we have time. That, could, that could be the April Fools joke as we just pulled the plug. <laughs> we just anyway. we just don't. But yeah, let's start tour recap stuff. Steven Jaeger bomb. Is it Stefan Steven? Which is I I, I mean that's how that's how deep we've gone to find a winner in Sweden. Uh-huh. The Jaeger bomb avoids a playoff. Did you see? Well, never mind. <laughs> on the last hole, on the last, on the last hole, I, Scotty. I am Shepard. not trying to offend anybody, but as you know, I'll watch bits and pieces of four tournaments a year, give or take, and guess which one is not among them? Uh, the Houston. Yeah. Uh, Houston Open. Yeah. Yeah. Scheffler. Could have had three in a row. Yoinked a putt on the 18th. Finishes one shot out of the playoffs. Steven Yeager wins. Again, I get it. It's not a household name. But very quickly, this is what I took from Steven Yeager that people should pay attention to. Look at his bag setup. This is this is, this is is a guy that pays attention to most wanted testing. Ping, G430 LST driver. Makes sense. 425 7 wood. Ping. G425 Max 7. They stole my heart. Wood. They stole my heart. Oh, I love right. the 7 wood. Right? Nice bounces man. over. Bounces over to Vokey SM10 for wedges. Odyssey AI1 two ball putter. Titleist Pro V1 ball. Here's two other things interesting. Callaway AI Smoke Triple Diamond HL. So it's a high launch version of a 3 wood. Typically it's like That's a 4 with a four. Like 16. I mean, but 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 Semantics. his is at fifteen point eight degrees. Fifteen point eight, not sixteen. So anyway, um, point being, but goes to Callaway for that particular club, and then he plays ping S fifty five iron. Does not strike me as a new model. I get a little lost in the ping lineup sometimes, but S fifty five does not scream current lineup to me. It is not. He's got the X1 honeys, Randy. (laughs) X1 honeys for Randy, and we are several general. But what I love about this, you can tell it fits him. It works for him. There's a comfort not upgrading unless it actually makes a spot in your bag better. I think that is absolutely fantastic and awesome. So that's what I wanted to note about that. But you know what should be the headline, Tony? And now we're we're part of the problem. Now we're part of the problem. Three for three. Unreal. Back to back to back. She's won in her last three starts. 
that should be the headline in the whole golf world this year. And again, we didn't lead with it. So I guess we're part of the problem. But well, we, we did yeah. it for reasons of making a very smooth transition. So, well, <laughs> then, yeah. But man, oh man, we haven't seen the right. We, I mean, Scheffler was close on that. But like, man, on the women's side, whoa, Nelly. I, I mean, this is historic. This could be the year of, of Nelly. And I feel like it's not getting its due. Is this an issue of who who's to blame for that, Tony? Because what we can't debate is whether or not this is remarkable, should be the lead story, is a phenomenal story for sports, period, not just women's sports. Why is it not getting the love? Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a fair question. I think look, for – Better or worse, not sure. For sure, the men's game gets more attention. I mean, Scotty won back to back, and it's all everybody talked about. Nelly's Nelly's gone three in a row, and you're just like, I didn't I didn't really realize she'd won twice in a row to get us to this point. So, uh, raw deal, raw deal. Yeah, because I mean, we get it after after the PJ Tour. There's only right again. It's a niche of a niche of a niche, and I get it. Golf is a niche of all the other sports, and then after. <laughs> Let's assume that people that are watching golf, you know, PJ Tour takes the biggest slice of that pie. And then it's like, okay. And Ryan Ballingy, who we've both worked with and, and respect his work, he does a great job. He posed a really interesting question. This was relative to Champions Tour versus LPGA. And his question was what, Tony? I'd have to go find the exact tweet, but it's it's fundamentally is like, which would you rather watch? Because – what happens because the Champions Tour gets to piggyback on PGA Tour television contracts? I mean, functionally, it gets televised at a priority level higher than LPGA. So the LPGA is the afterthought. And so, you know, the, the fundamental or what I took from this question, I was like, which would you rather watch? All things being equal, if, if you've got two channels on your television, one of them is playing a Champions Tour event, one of them is playing an LPG event. LPGA, excuse me, consider non-majors both of them just for the sake of conversation. Which one are you watching? Which one are you watching? Me, LPGA all day long, every day. Ten out of ten. Yeah, and most, I mean, in, in any given week, again, excluding majors, I'm more likely to watch LPGA anyway. But I'm, I'm curious, like, guys, listening to this, let us know. Are you champion store or are you going to watch the LPGA? And is there fundamentally just something in the equation that you think is totally out of whack? Because I think... I think the women's game has deserved for a long time way more attention than it gets, way more priority on television. You hear solutions for fixing a problem because it is a, a problem, whether that's, you know, people are talking about the president's come potentially as, as a, like team, a mixed event. team of yeah, right. yeah, men. Right. Even the Olympics, right? Let's, let's do it that right. way. I mean, so right. I, I think, I think more effort needs to be made to draw attention to the LPGA wherever possible. That That's my yeah. guess. Yeah. My other two cents, now we're up to four cents, I think, roughly, is there's a statement. Uh, Chris DeMarco was on Subpar Podcast with Drew and Colton. I, this kind of blew up in his face a little bit. but so Some of it was tongue in cheek, right? I hope so. And this part, I don't like, I hope so. But more or less, Chris was you know complaining, I guess he used that term loosely, about the purses that they're playing for on PGA tour champions. And I think this was the part that was kind of in jest was, you know, we're just kind of waiting for the Saudis <laughs> to buy us to, you know, and, and infuse some real money into that. that, that that's the part where it's like, okay, kind of tongue in cheek. But I, I think the truth was there, the complaint in terms of the t- you know, prizes, uh, purses, et cetera, that they're paying for. And it's interesting, like, uh, yeah, and he didn't say this, like, hey, we don't care about the women's game, but I can see where somebody would maybe get that type of message, like, hey, all we care about is the PJ Tour and then Champions Tour, and we're not even going to acknowledge the fact that the LPJ Tour also plays for comparatively much, much smaller prize pools than other major world tours, and they are the top of the women's game. The Champions Tour PJ is not the top of the men's game. It is the de facto retirement league, right? It's 50 and over. And you have phenomenal players. Do not get me wrong. You have guys that can play on that tour and still compete oh, yeah. Stuart Sink, on the, on the big boys tour. Certainly guys waiting to turn 
50 to get their tag ratings. I think is 49 right now. He'll turn. You had Steven Alker kind of come out of nowhere in the last year. Again, phenomenal golfers, but why? <laughs> if you guys have played for 20, 30 years on tour, have made yeah, millions, just, yeah. and now I mean, we're complaining. And if you're asking me, like, am I am I going to tune in to watch Demarco, or am I going to go try and watch Lydia Ko? <laughs> like all day, every day, I'm Team Lydia. You know, this, so yes. And yes, it's, I mean, here's, hard. here's the scary part for me because we years it seems like LPJ has struggled to get the attention it deserves. If if the Saudis, if piss, whatever you want to call it, like the Live decides that hey, you know what, we we see an opportunity in the women's game. You think there's been an exodus with the men? Irony of ironies, right? <laughs> Could you imagine if the Saudis decide they want to pay women on an equal pay scale as men? I mean, it's, the LPG is, LPGA is over tomorrow because the disparity would yeah. be so massive. There, even yeah. I, as much as like I said, I pointed out problems with live and where the money comes from and everything. I, I right. cannot make the argument. Like, oh, you, no. How do you turn it down? So right, the <laughs> SNL skit kind of writes itself for that one if that if that were to happen. But you know it, and just as soon as you think there's crazy things out there, there's crazier things, Tony. <laughs> Bryson, yeah. Bryson, uh, Bryson, what is you doing? What? So uh, Bryson, you're you're gonna fill in all the details here, but here's the Cliff Notes version. Bryson hit a golf ball that he thinks is a rolled back or potential uh, example. A ball of rolled back. he believes would be non-conforming. Would the be ball that he believes would be non-conforming, blah, 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 blah. And the mad scientist reached some conclusions and said some things. And, and, and again, take us through this because yeah. <laughs> right now, my, my sense, I, I, the only thing I can come up with here, my first response is like, Bryson, shut your mouth. You're an idiot. What are you doing? That's well, my only response. That was, I mean, was, should I have a idiot. different response? He, he's an idiot is actually a direct quote of a text message I received when I started kicking tires on this and trying to understand where everything would fall. With, with, All right. In, so what happened? What did yeah, he do? He Take, start went, us from the beginning. He went out on the golf course on his YouTube channel and compared a Nike one tour. That's, you know, that's what he said. That's what we, we believe it to be. One tour golf ball to his Pro V1X left dash under the guise of this would be what it is like to play with a rolled back golf ball because this is how a rolled back golf ball performs. And so see all the things that happen. And when you start to look at those things that happen, some of them as he interpreted them don't make sense. So big picture, I think Bryson proved something with this video and credit to him for being entertainment, entertaining. I just don't think he proved what he think he needs to be proving. So to kind of step you through the idea, first of all, I, I, let's start with the idea that the the Nike Tour one tour represents a rolled back golf ball. There, there are right, some questions the here. Let, let's start with that's the numbers. The right, lead. this was yeah. a ball when new. The, the data I found eighty eight compression. So he described it as a low right. compression. Eighty eight by no sensible measure is low compression. That's about where a Pro V one starts, give or take. This is a fifteen year. We're talking about a fifteen year old golf ball from a company that has not made a golf ball since 2016. And so immediately, like, all right, first of all, where did you get these things? How were they stored? What are we even working with? But taking what we know, starting with an 88 compression golf ball, knowing that a solid core ball, this isn't even resin, this is still rubber core for Nike. This is the, the last of their rubber core tour balls. We know that's going to firm. It's going to firm up periodically over year time. over year before leveling off it's going to be at least 10 points firmer than where it was. So now we, we can extrapolate that we're talking about a ball that's very close to 100 compression, which is going to be definitely high 90s. Yeah. Ever so slightly maybe than his left dash. So we're talking about a 100 compression ball being described as low compression. This, right. is, this is nonsense. It's just nonsense. There, there's no other word for that. So we're starting from there. It is unlike anything that's going to, sort of fall within a rollback spec. Okay, right. this is a ball that would not be conforming. We're almost certain of this. Would not conform to the new rule. So, yeah, it it didn't perform like his ball, and that makes sense because, again, for the tour ball, where it is in the marketplace, the left dash is going to be almost certainly the lowest spinning ball. Definitely one of the lowest spinning balls in the market. The one tour we're talking about that was designed for tight. That was a Tiger Woods-designed golf ball. So what does that tell us? 
It's spinning. going to spin. Tiger so, has always liked higher spinning golf. Right. Course. So if we Prior conclude, to, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it it almost certainly spins. It definitely spins more than a left dash. It's it maybe is a little slower, but we also don't know how performance is related to the fact that this ball has been <laughs> available for or at least around for 15 years, stored in God knows what conditions. So are right. we are we talking about a ball that doesn't doesn't perform to Bryson's expectations based on the spec of the ball or just because it's old AS and, and God knows where it came from. So that's whose that's, garage was it sitting in <laughs> exactly. for a decade so and a half? You got that. Um, again, you've got the spinning factor. You've got the fact that it, it's old as dirt. And realistically, the aerodynamics on that ball, if we know anything from the history of IP ball, probably not on par with left dash. And so I think when you talk distance loss, you can pretty much see where this is coming from and how it has nothing to do with a rollback. So what I take from this is that, hey, good entertainment. Kudos for Bryson. And I think being on YouTube right. gives him the appearance of sure. being more accessible, more relatable. That's a good thing. But when we really dissect this, I don't think this says anything about a rollback. At absolute most, all it does is highlight the importance of getting properly fit for a golf ball because you're going from <laughs> left dash, which would work really well for Bryson, right? It's a fastball that doesn't spin much. It flies high. And comparing that with this one tour D, that, or excuse me, one tour, which on its best days, very likely spun a lot. Definitely didn't fly with the same penetrating trajectory as left dash. Again, on spec, not as fast. Definitely not low compression by any span. So, yeah, no. guess what? No. All of you watching this are probably going to get better performance. Certainly, actually. I'll go so far as to say you will get better performance with a golf ball that fits you versus, versus one, one that doesn't. So, thank you for that, Bryson. But beyond that, I got, I got nothing. I, nothing. I know. I know. So I'm going to, so I'm going to check my oh, notes. That was and, Jesus. <laughs> here's, I'm going to check my notes and go through the Cliff's Notes version here very, very quickly. Bryson called a ball low compression that was nowhere close to a uh, uh, low compression, hit a golf ball that whose performance spec is diametrically opposed to what his likely performance spec should be. And third point, therefore proves that it's really, 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 really important to get fit for the correct performance spec for you because while he wanted to point out something here about potential performance implications of a rolled back ball, he, he did nothing to further that conversation but did point out very aptly how important because you're using two. I mean, he may as well have been going, hey, here's a left dash that I play. And here's a super high spinning Kirkland. And let's see what happens. There's that that an idea for the next video. I and mean, he can do it because he's right? not under contract with anybody. I love it. Let's yeah. do that. And yeah. I, I think it's probably not going to be wildly different than what he found. So no. in the context of a rollback, what he's proven is he doesn't like hitting the ball any amount shorter. I'm not going <laughs> to like that. You won't like that. I, I, I won't like that. that. Right. Kind of a given, but I suppose it's pretty solid info. Right. But if you are a person who needs lower launch, lower spin, or I'm sorry, higher launch, lower spin, and absolutely dialed in arrow, going with a ball that is high launch, high spin with piss poor arrow probably won't be good for you. I think that's what he proved. If absolutely. Anything. Like yeah. that's, that's about Like I said, he proved something that's just about probably it. not what he thought. Oh man! All right, Tony, we got to go and we got to go into this one. This is a good chunky topic. Stick because people want to shoot lower scores. I, I get that right when we look at these search engine terms and things and and everything. People are constantly looking for ways to get better, especially avid golfers. Hey, how do I shoot a lower score? And there are some people that feel. I mean, and, and we talk about this all the time. There are things that you can do on the equipment side, getting fit. Replacing your wedges, finding making right sure golf. finding the price and find the right golf ball. Come on, buddy. All those things, right? No doubt. And then there's this whole other area of the mental side. This can be core strategy. It can be it's well, true. like Bridgestone has with mindset on their golf. Like that's not a performance thing in terms of a spec or a material or a compression. It is a 
process, mental, etc. Anyway, we started talking about this because there are a couple uh, social media accounts with massive amounts of followers, very, very popular uh, people, and you can figure out who they are by by looking. But the topic was on a par five. Should I go for the green in two, or should I lay up to a specific yardage? Preferred and these, distance. Preferred distance. And these two accounts, again, that you can find are dead wrong. They are giving people information which is contrary to actually helping them shoot a lower score. If you believe in math and data. Okay. So if you believe if you if you believe in things like math, data, the sky is blue, grass is green, the earth rotates, you know, on an axis is round and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So if you buy that water is wet, the sky is blue. That sort of thing. How did they get this so dead wrong? These are these are supposedly smart, influential people, and they are dead wrong. Yeah, I think it's it's hard to fault anybody because there is so much mythology in golf, right? Like we've we've heard these things years for years and years, and it's it's the reason why why people try and lay up to specific distances or believe that you know the drive for show, putt for no adage that's been disproven, or why people will take a three wood off the tee, believing that they actually hit it straight. Way more right? accurate. Way right. more accurate. All, all of these things, which anecdotally may have been true on one shot or another, but when you look at the totality of it, the big picture in terms of hey, how, what is what is the actionable intelligence here? A lot mm-hmm. of it just doesn't check out now that we have access to literally millions of golf shots hit by golfers of varying ability levels, and we can actually look at those ability levels in buckets and see kind of hey, what what is going on? And so, you know, we've got. We've got mountains of shot scope data we can look at. They are our own course data partner, and that gives us great access to, to mm-hmm. more info than we've ever had before. And so when we start to look at this stuff, this idea that you should attempt to lay up to a preferred distance instead of just hitting it as far as you possibly can, it doesn't check out. Now, I want to be clear. Nobody's saying be stupid. Right? My, my first rule of course be management. Reckless. Be you know, reckless. Do you remember my first rule of course management? Be reckless. Yeah. D D D S. Don't oh, do right. dumb don't do shit. dumb shit. And so yeah. if you look at it and go, hey, you know what? Really going at this green or trying to hit this as far as, as I can is dumb shit, then don't do it. And so look, I'd be curious. Let me know in the comments how you would define dumb shit that you don't want to do, the shots that you don't want to take on. Like tell us about that. But the big but picture, like nobody is saying, look, if you've got a flag at 210 and it's a 200 water carry. That's dumb shit. Don't do it. Right. That's <laughs> right. a case where right. laying up makes right. sense. But if you've kind of got, you know, nothing but open space in front of you, maybe bunkers or, you know, tree lines that are wide, which worst, are in most... worst cases, I'm going to end up in the rough or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. that's, you want to hit it as far as you can. And the reason I say this, all data. Let me give you some numbers. Okay. Yeah, let's go through some data. So let me just set the stage here. So we're talking about a great example. So you got a par five, you're 280 yards to the green. There isn't a lake at 200 yards that you're going to run into. There isn't a bit of fire, right? There isn't a <laughs> moat. Why with, do, that you know, isn't a make, That should be a, <laughs> I will, give me a golf course that has a bit of fire as a, as right. a hazard. That's not there. So saying, hey, all right. I'm going to blast three wood. I, I can't hit it 280, but I'm going to blast three wood. I'm going to get it up, let's For, say, yeah, within 50 yards of the green. Yonder. Yonder. Or, or you know, I love my wedge game at 100 yards. I'm going to hit a 180-yard shot so that I can lay up at 100. So go through this with me. Talk talk me through this. Yeah, so I, I kind of dissected this and tried to figure out how I can make it make sense to people, especially those that are going to argue and, and focus on some of the oh, stuff we hear as a pushback. So. Here we go, right? So let's start with proximity to the flag based on distance. So from 20 to 50 yards, zero handicap is going to average 17 feet. Back about 50 to 100, that's somewhere in most people's preferred layup distance. That number jumps Mm -hmm. to 26 feet. For a five handicap, 23 and 36, 10 handicap. 25 to 50 yards, 24 foot on average. From that range, move it out to 50 to 100. 41. Now you're, you're getting closer to actually doubling the number. 
And thankfully, mm-hmm. no group gets quite to Dublin, but look at like 20 handicaps. That's where people like talk, start talking about like scrub golfers or people who suck and can't play the short game, can't hit partial wedge shots and all of this stuff. Right. Proximity to the pin, 25 to 50 yards, 30 feet. From 50 to 100 yards, it's 49 feet. So not only does that tell me one, closer is better. Closer is better at every handicap. That's mm-hmm. the data and supports the better, that. Right. The and better player you have, the more important that is. No. Right? So that it's actually the worst the player. So this is the argument, right? Well, that, that may be working for good golfers, but bad golfers, they suck on partial wedge shots. So for them, right. it's better to be at a comfortable distance. Again, mm-hmm. no. It, it doesn't pan out in the data. Closer is better across all handicap ranges. Now, the, the next kind of thing that we really need to look at, like, even, even if you were really good from your preferred distance, and, and everybody or a lot of people think they're the exception to the rule. And look, there are I, I practice 80 yard. I got this 80 yard shot yeah, and I just dial it right? in. It's there dialed. are exceptions by the numbers, and you are probably not one of them, but there are exceptions. Yeah. So here's, here's the other thing I would. I would Make it, it really like the idea of laying up to a preferred distance and why it's a bad idea is, is simply this. You can't do it. Exactly. You cannot reliably do it. And again, here's the data that I use to support this conclusion. Again, coming from ShotScope and the U.S. A little help from the U.S. According to the U.S.G., the, USGA, the average green size in North America, 5,622 square feet. Maybe a little okay. bit bigger in over in Europe where they play a lot of links golf, just looking at St. Andrews. I haven't been can test to it. I don't know that for right. a fact. Just going to say maybe. Throw so it we, out there. If we look at what is, I don't know, like how far out if you, are you sort of making that decision? So I, I looked at a couple distant, couple different distances, but let's say you're 175 to 200 yards out. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe 200, 225 yards out. Like you, you can't hit your target. Like from that distance, right? You're hitting... If you've got a layup and to do it, you've got to hit 175 yards. Let's start there, right? Mm-hmm. Zero handicaps hit an average of 37% in grades. So 37% of the time, barely more than a third, they're able to hit a target 5,622 feet in area. For a five right. handicap, 175 to 200 yards, he can hit that target 23% of the time. By the time you get to an eight handicap, it's 8% of the time. And so I'm trying yeah. to figure out if you cannot hit, if I get a little closer, these, these numbers get a little better, obviously. But average but golfers, not really. Yeah, average golfers cannot reliably hit a green from the kind of distance that they're trying to, to hit layer right. shots. Too. So, Let alone a specific number. Right. So it, even if you did have a, a preferred distance that you're really, really good at, the odds that your approach shot will get you to that distance are slim to numb, none, numb, none. My brain so, is yeah, why not just fire it away? Is it Scott Fawcett Even, would say, send it. Just send I was going to say, I was having this discussion with, with Scott Fawcett when we were down there, and for those of you who don't know, Scott Fawcett, this guy started Decade, which really put all this into math stuff, the thinking, the concepts weren't new, but the platform and making it all work, absolutely. And uh, part of what, he, you know, what we were talking about is the best players in the world can't hit a specific number meaning he was giving me an example of a a player that he had worked with and said okay we're gonna hit 20 shots to a target of 120 yards so he hit 20 shots in a row at a target of 120 yards what was the one distance he did not hit in those 20 shots 120 yards 120 yeah it was 117 121 122 and as your handicap goes up that that miss that yeah. Yes. You can yes. and it doesn't refer distance. You can and it doesn't factor in things like bounce and roll and whatever. So if I'm so again, take decent amateur player or whatever, and I say, okay, I'm gonna hit this 180 yards so that I have hundred yards left in. What I can absolutely guarantee you is I'm not gonna have hundred yards in. I'm gonna have <laughs> 89 to 113. And maybe I love that hundred yard shot but I don't like the 93 or the 102, you know, whatever I can almost guarantee you, I'm going to land more often on a number that isn't as comfortable as opposed to, Hey, if I push it up there, my scoring average strokes gained, if I'm 43 to 55 yards, 
or 99 to 112 yards, I'm taking that 40 to give 53 or whatever. That, I, give me that close yes. one out of the rough. Give me but, even out of a bunker more often than not. Okay, Closer but Tony, I never, I never practice 45 yard wedge shots. Why well, should I keep? Why like I never practice those, so I I'm just more comfortable. Like th- that's I, the objection I feel like I hear all the time. You know, I, people I, just I, this, I actually joked with because uh, you know one of the other guys, one of our former forum moderators, Michael Riley, posted you know kind of a, of a joke that speaks along the same lines, right? It's like you know yeah. I'm better. I, so I, I was joking with Lou Stagner. I was like, I feel like I putt better from 12 feet than I do from three feet. I feel like that. <laughs> But I'm also right. just smart enough to know that I don't. <laughs> and that's, right. that's it. Just really, feels that way. Yeah, it so, just feels that way. You know, like that. This is the math. Hit it as close as you possibly can without doing dumb shit. Period. Hard stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a great one too. Where people are going to have other scenarios, and we can certainly take these and find data to support. Like, hey, what are we doing here? Like these, you know. So the next time you think about going for it into. I would challenge you to do that. Now, again, I'll give you a caveat. People say, well, I'm not confident in that shot. Okay. If you can't commit to hitting a shot, you're probably not going to hit a good shot. But get to the point where you can say, hey, I'm going to try this this time. Or if you're out practicing by yourself or whatever, drop one ball, hit to your preferred number, which you won't hit, and then send one and maybe start to do some of those experiments on your own. But there are other ones and definitely do it when there are people there. behind you you don't like. That's that's the best time to play that's two balls. Quitting stuff. Finish up. We saw uh, saw this on the USGA conforming mm-hmm. list on Monday. The Taylor made burner mini two embargo coming. I want to say April fifth, this something <laughs> like that. So we'll have all the deets next week. Next week ish. Yep. Next week. Next week. But what do we know? Give me sixty yeah, seconds. I mean, honestly, of what we just we know. know it's slightly di- or different somehow. And again. All we're working off of right now is primarily USGA photos. We don't have the scale. I know what I would want. I don't think I'm going to get it. I would love to see it smaller than the previous one. That would be my big wish. Mm. Again, I love mm. that original SLDR. Smaller you mini? Can, yeah, give mini me give mini. me something in the SLDR give mini Give me a size, mini mini. And I am happy. But yeah, we'll see. But you know, it did really well. It has a cult following. Perpetually sold out on TaylorMade.com. So mm. I think you know it's not a massive market, but they have a market. No. So. And we tend to see it before the Masters. This makes sense for people that, again, maybe a club that's a little bit easier to shape off the tee, but doesn't give. And again, a lot of times, right, it is for tour pros. It's about shaping a little bit. It's not about hitting straighter. And as you you kind of mm-hmm. hinted at, right? It's it's that, not that it's I need to crooked. hit it straighter. I need something that goes just a little bit shorter than my driving. Yep, wedge contest. Tell the people, Tony, what do we got for a wedge contest? Are you talking the no putts given challenge that we teach? Yeah, I am. So That's yeah, what I'm talking is, about. Is, so I saw this thing on Instagram a couple of weeks back, and I, I can't even tell you the specific the specifics of it. I want to say, but the challenge was like, would you be willing to wager the fact that you could, in a hundred tries, make a shot from sixty five yards? So hole out from sixty five yards, okay. given a hundred tries. And if you did it, you won like some amount of money, a million five, call it. But if you couldn't, the penalty was you couldn't play golf for three years. So, one, oh. we're going to do this. Chris and I are going to do this challenge, figure we're out. do it. Because I am, I am supremely confident. You give me 100 I'm guys at 65 yards, I'm going to make in. it every I'm, – I'm, no way that I don't pull out from 65 about 100 yards. 100 yards. No especially, way. Especially on a simulator. So, yeah. No, that probably doesn't <laughs> hurt, but. I'll pick a hole with some undulation, some trickery in it. One of the boulders holes from Foresight. Um, there you but go. I would love to go. We're going to do it. So, so let us know. First of all, if, if my, by all means, feel free to try. Let us know how it goes. But here's my question. One, how confident are you could, you could do it? And what is the least amount of money you would be willing to risk against a three-year ban? Ooh. Because, you know, for me, I think realistically, it's probably – Hundred grand though on in some days, like if you offered me a sandwich to never play golf again, I'd be like, Yeah, perfect. As long as his jersey mics I'm in. Screw this game in time. So that's just the first no putts given challenge. We will we will choose somebody from the comment section and send them a head cover and maybe a dozen golf balls. We'll figure it out. What's last, Chris? Last last thing, just gonna tell you what I'm testing right now. I'm super excited uh, about these. We're gonna hold them up here a little bit. So you know me, I'm I've been a Ventus Black guy since it since we kind of got dialed in Ventus Black Six X, and it is still my baby. I still love it. However, 
New company out there. We'll talk more about these guys later. Artera. I think you're, yeah, you're upside down. There you go. I think I was upside down and backwards. Now I can, yep. now I can read both the TPT and the Artera. These mm-hmm. are different companies, different shafts. Different Chris companies, different fun. shafts. Apparently, I'm oh, not yes. having any fun. Oh, yes. Different companies, different <laughs> shafts. Alex Just D out. was head of VP at Fujikura for head of VP? two and a half. T- <laughs> head of VP. He was head of VP, man. He was, he was head of R&D and V&P and other letters. Doesn't matter. Anyway. This is his company now, Artera, Artera. New thing. So very, very excited to try to this. And then uh, TPT getting back in the fold. So I'm going to see if these either one can kick the Ventus out. That's what I'm into. All right. That's it. That's all I got, Tony. 3520, we did all right. Find us, follow us, answer all those questions. Put notes down there. Put them in the comments. We'll get back to you. Until next time, we out. We out.